AI search is beginning to surpass the power of traditional search engines, even the likes of Google. But what if you could build an AI search engine with no code and you could do it in say 10 minutes? Well, that's what I'm gonna to demonstrate to you in this video. But before I get started, if you're learning Bubble and you want to get access to even more of our content than we have on YouTube, you can click the link down in the description where you can access hundreds of Bubble tutorial videos, but let's launch into this one. To power an AI search engine no-code application, we need to have a AI search API. And for that, I'm going to be using Exa, uh, which uh, their approach to indexing the web is the same way that you would fine-tune an AI model. Uh, and uh, they boast all of these impressive abilities. And let me give you a really quick demonstration. So uh, I'm in the dashboard, and I'm going to say, um, what is the best no code web app builder and then i'm going to click run and this is going to give us a preview of what we can generate in the in our bubble app and so we are getting results here back from uh doric uh drab code adola uh yeah here we go we're getting some uh, no code web app builders back so how do we put this into our bubble app well let's go straight into bubble i've got a blank page here and let's just add in the essential bits we need an input and now i'm not going to focus on designing this well i'm not going to use the right uh, layouts or anything like that i'm just dropping components onto the page to make this nice and quick and we shall label this search and why not let's make use of the new label and icons uh, because we should be able to find a search icon there look at that Looking good. Right, next we need to connect to the EXA API in order to send queries and get responses back. Uh, so if I go into the playground, uh, we can see that it actually prepares everything we need to know and it is right here ready. Different AI tools, different APIs have different playgrounds. This is nice because it just tells you everything you need up front. Uh, so we need to translate all of this into our bubble app. Uh, so let's go back into the editor and I'll go into plugins and then we need to go to the API connector. If you don't see the API connector, you add it through add plugins. It's free, it's made by bubble. And as you can see, it allows you to connect to almost any service under the sun that has an API. We've got email, uh, transactional emails, we've got other AI tools, we've got weather, we've got other search tools, all of which I've demonstrated in previous videos. Uh, so let's add in a new API and I'll call this Exa exa.ai. Uh, right. Now, most APIs require some uh, form of authentication because effectively they need to know who to bill for uh, what's being used. So we see that we have to authenticate with API key in header. So I'm going to copy that and then say uh, private key in header. Now, most use the key name authorization. They don't want that. They want X API key. Uh, then let's go back into here and uh, here's an API key. I will be deleting this before publishing this video, uh, pasting that into there. Uh, then are there other shared headers we need? Well, it says accept application JSON and content type application JSON. Now, I know that in a recent change, Bubble has made content type application JSON a default. I'm not sure about accept, so I'm going to try it. If it fails, this is where I'll come back to we now need to make a post request to this endpoint. So I'll copy the endpoint and we'll say uh, AI search post, paste it in. Uh, I want to set this as an action because I want a button click to trigger this action in a workflow. So I say action. And then we just need to put in all of the body content that's required. So I'm going to copy all of the data section here paste it in. Okay. And on now we should have enough to actually test it. So we're going to initialize the call and this is testing, but also it's a way of instructing bubble what sort of format to expect in the response. So let's, let's initialize and see what happens. That's good. You see, it's very quick, very quick indeed. Uh, and we get back a list of JSON here. Okay, it's all of the content. And actually, we get back quite a bit of text about each item. That's perfect. 
Uh, now I'm going to make special note of the results list is AI search results because I want to be able to display this on a page as soon as it comes in. So I'm going to click save. Uh, but we want to make some of this dynamic. We want to particularly make the query dynamic. So I'm going to delete everything there, including the speech marks. And I'll explain why shortly. Uh, but this will be our search term. Doesn't matter what you label it, entirely up to you. Now, if I tried to reinitialize the call now, it would fail because this is empty and it's going to be a required field. So I'm just going to put my speech marks back in and say uh, latest news in the UK because one of the advantages of using a search AI API is that you should expect really recent news. I'm actually going to test this because the most recent large news in the UK is uh, I think the uh, English team winning uh, the semi-finals of the Euros. So let's reinitialize and see what we get back. Where we get back uh, heat wave. Ah, this is interesting. We get back heat wave and it's published in 2022. Uh, we also get more data from 2022. Okay, uh, it's all from 2022. Now, they, I'm just, I'm going off script here which is to say that we can select uh, the cruel range. So let's say the last seven days. Um, I'm going to copy this in. OK, now let's try that. OK, so now we do have something which yet this was Sad story, but this was published yesterday. Uh, okay, yeah, there we go. All very, yeah, there we go. So we solved it. I solved it as we went through. We can just filter what results you get back based on the cruel date. Uh, I'm not actually going to use that. Just went a little bit off script there. So uh, let's add this into our page. So we need to have a repeating group because we want to show a list of items returned. And uh, the type of content is going to be uh, AI search results. Uh, and I'm going to leave that empty because I'm going to fill it when I get the results. I'm now going to add in some text labels so that we can see that the results have indeed worked. And I get back, I get access to all of these fields. How do I have these fields here? Well, if I go back into uh, the API connector, I can either reinitialize the call. That's handy if you just want to, if it doesn't take too long, and also you don't mind about how much you're spending on the AI, uh, on the API. But I can just view manual response here. And I can see that in results, we get score, title, ID, URL, etc. So I can just say title. OK. Right, now let's connect up with a workflow. And yeah, this is going to come in in under 10 minutes. So we go into plugins, and this is a mess because this is a demo app that I've used so many times. In fact, I'm just going to search for it. I get Exa AI AI search. It's labeled that because this is how I've labeled it in the API connector. You might see something different depending on how you've labeled it. Um, I want to now connect this to my, my input. OK, now remember, I said I removed the speech marks. That's because I want to make everything in the input JSON safe. We've got videos covering exactly what this does. But in a nutshell, uh, JSON is very sensitive to particular punctuation, like speech marks um, and like colons, because it's going to know, is it part of the code or is it part of the text submitted in the code? So we use JSON safe to make any content in that input safe to send over JSON but it also wraps everything in speech marks. So I'm not now double speech marking it because JSON say puts those speech marks back in. I'm then going to say uh, display list in a repeating group. It's selected the only repeating group on the page by default. And the list I want to show is the results of the AI API call. Now, this only works, it's only gone blue saying that it's accepted it because there is an exact match. Uh, a mistake that I could uh, easily have made is to say, oh, uh, I want to choose this one. Uh, no. Uh, yeah, I want to choose this one. No, I want to choose the results because it's the results that is the right 
level within the JSON that goes straight to the list of results as they come back. So let's test it. I've clicked preview. Here's my page in my dev version. And so I'll ask again, what is the, what are the best no code uh, web app builders? And I'm going to click search. So my API request is going ahead and I get back my search results and they're displayed in my repeating group. So there you go, coming in at less than 10 minutes, that is how you can build an AI search engine with no code using bubble.io, using the Exa uh, AI API, that's how you can build it.